Um, can we get that? We'll get this video up. So I've, I've put together a bit of a uh, a bit of a video that sort of runs through a whole bunch of the the different um, Canvas features. Hopefully, I think we I think I've covered all of them. So we can sort of play through that, talk about it. Um, anything that we miss, feel free to ask at the end. Uh, so let's get into it. So I guess the first thing to sort of talk about is obviously we've got these four new modes for the Canvas editor: text, image, in in paint, out paint. Well, that was already there. Um, image to image and sketch to image. And and so you know they all allow you to do various different things. Text to image is obviously, um, you know, what you, you guys already do in the in the image generation uh, section of the platform, except you can actually do that now on the canvas. So you can create in the canvas and then you can go and edit straight there without needing to sort of jump between the two sections. Uh, in paint, out paint, that's what you've already been, you may have already used before if you've used the canvas, but we've extended upon it to, to make it more powerful. Image to image, that's the same as essentially in the um, in the AI you know, generation section, except you can now do it in Canvas. And then sketched images is really fun. That's where you can actually draw directly onto, um, onto the Canvas itself and then turn your sketch into something that's consistent um, you know, with, with what you have there. So what, we, what we'll start with is actually generating a scene that we can, we can basically work from uh, on the Canvas. And, and notably as well, we've now got support for um, all all fine-tuned models within the canvas and so that's for the text image feature but also for, for in painting and out painting and and so we're starting off by generating something using alchemy and prompt magic v3 so i've got a scene um using the 3d animated fine tune and so these are these are this is actually from a prompt that i was playing with and posted the other night to the facebook group um fun scene and so we pick an image here where actually you can see if, if you look closely that the face of the character is is not really well detailed. So this is a great, um, I guess, first example of, of one of the things you can do with the canvas. Um, we can we can you know mask her face uh, in order to improve upon it, but actually as well, we've we've added a feature called render density, and essentially what that does is it allows you to focus on a smaller region of the scene. Uh, which actually gets upscaled and then in-painted and then resized back down to fit your image. So essentially what that allows for is a higher fidelity in-painting for smaller regions uh, within the image. So, so here you can see we've bumped up the render density to like 2.5, masked out the face. Um, and notably, we, we also have an in-paint strength slider here as well. And what the in-paint strength slider actually does is it dictates to the model how much attention to pay uh, to what's already there in the image. So 0.7, it's it's looking at the image somewhat. When, when you're actually at an in-paint strength of one, uh, you're actually basically ignoring what's under the mask entirely. So when you in-paint with an in-paint strength of one, it doesn't really look at what's under the mask. It looks at what's, what else is in the image. Um, and it will try to create something fresh that matches your prompt and fits in with what's, what else is there. But so using 0.7, so it is looking a little bit at what's underneath that mask. So we prompt for a female adventurer with that higher render density. You can see it's sort of improved upon the details of the face, added, added a little bit more to it. And so that's, you know, that's cool. Um, so I think at this point, uh, I'll just sort of demonstrate what happens if you actually bump up that in-paint strength to, to one. So in doing that, we'd actually expect to, to see a greater change. Uh, rather than something that's more reflective of what's already there. So we pump it up to one. Um, we're, we're now expecting to see the, um, the female adventurer's head change a lot more. So as you can see, hair color's changed. It still matches the rest of the body because again, it's still looking at the rest of the, the um, rest of what's in that context box, but it changes more so. And so here we've bumped up the render density even further and we're getting an even more detailed face uh, on the character. And so I think that's, you know, uh, one thing that a lot of people ask is how do how do we sort of fix some of these? Um, it can be a couple of things, like especially if you have small fine details in images like faces, and this is you know quite a large image and that face is quite small, you might not get the detail that you're looking for. So this is a great way of adding that. Another thing it could really be useful for as well um, is if you're trying to to finesse a certain element of a scene, it doesn't have to be a face, it could be any sort of aspect of the scene that becomes super useful. Uh, another another way, um, uh, yeah. So 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 I guess from here um, we're going to sort of explore 
um, just, just for anyone who has never actually used the in-painting, out-painting features before, essentially in the same sort of way, we can use that to, to remove elements or change or add elements to the scene. So here we're basically removing, there's like a floating jellyfish at the back, basically mask over it. I think we just prompted for a stunning image, which I often use is just like a default prompt. It tends to work quite well when you're in painting if you if you don't want to actually specify something something in particular so if you want to remove something it can be very useful that's helpful that's really great tip yeah um so there's a lot of, i'm still trying, running through it trying to run through there's so many that it's it, I, i've just sort of realized as i'm talking through this it's very information dense so maybe i can take a minute and pause and see if you guys have any questions like jake and david um before yeah. i keep going yeah well, any thoughts a, about that I had a question, maybe not as related to the canvas, but what's up with this uh, jellyfish theme? Where did it come from? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, I think, I don't know who it was who posted the first jellyfish um, on the Facebook group, but that kind of just um, set off a whole stream of everyone riffing on jellyfish. I think because they just look awesome. Like, you know, and yeah. and I think with Prompt Magic V3 and Alchemy, they're just, they're just a great... Um, yeah, motif to, to riff on, right? And yeah. so, I mean, how did, yeah. how did you prompt for like this particular image here? This one, I think I posted the prompt on the Facebook. Um, I'll, I'll get up the actual prompt as to what it was. It was a vibrant cinematic photo of a female adventurer exploring an alien jungle, strange plants, colorful Rick and Morty style, floating jellyfish, mushrooms, fungi, cordyceps. Giant, giant Venus flytrap, octane render and high quality. So there's a whole bunch of stuff. I just kept adding to it until I was like, yeah, that's that's a cool, like, you know. It's pretty yeah. accurate, though. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's like, that's the thing using, because with, um, you know, Prompt Magic V3 and, and we've got, um, you know, that sort of the, the prompt adherence is just kind of off the charts. Lovely. So, yeah, it's it looks, yeah, it's pretty, pretty awesome to play with. Uh, okay, so from here, I think, yeah, so again, with in-paint strength of, of one, uh, we can, we have more flexibility around adding elements to the scene. So, uh, you know, as, as here, so we're trying to add like an alien slug and, and it's done a, a pretty good job of that. But what you might find is when you're trying to add new elements to the scene, to a scene, you might actually find it's more effective to focus the context box on the zone that you're trying to add the element because it's almost like you don't want to give the model an out like if you think about it if you have a, a larger context box and you're asking for a giant alien slug it might think that something that's already in that scene kind of represents that alien slug and it might, won't want to add it to the scene so if you if you want to try and add something that's not there it can be quite effective to for example turn up the render density focus the context box on an area like i'm doing here and, and sort of ask for that alien slug. And in doing so, um, you're more likely to get to get what you're looking for. And remember that input strength needs to be on one if you really want to add something that has no relevance to what's already there. And so, you know, here we go, pretty weird looking green creature. Um, and sometimes when you do this, you might find it has a bit of a photo bashed look, like it doesn't quite fit the scene, but what you can actually do is mask over it again and then, and then re-prompt again with an in-paint strength a little bit lower. And what that's actually doing is looking at the, the, the creature that we've just added, it's taking sort of reference from the underlying color and form. And then we're running it back through again and giving it an opportunity to notice I increase the size of the context box, giving it a bit of an opportunity to kind of try and make it mesh better with the context that it's looking, it's looking at now. And so, you know, in doing that, uh hopefully you know the idea is that you get a you get a more coherent addition to the scene i think you know we kind of get that here it kind of sits a little bit better the lighting is a little bit more accurate um yeah so so now we have a weird mouthless armless <laughs> blob with eyes um that's cool i think it's pretty cool yeah from there, uh, we can explore sketch to image. So, so this is sort of where.